everyone welcome back to cbse learners this is me pooja m k rao i welcome you all to my online classes where you can learn absolutely free of cost now it's time for your subscription i want to know whether you have subscribed my channel or not if not then go and subscribe my channel and let's start the class okay now we have learned about the rise of nationalism in europe okay this class is for class 10 students okay so for the in the syllabus the rise of nationalism in europe is there okay so you can see that we have learned about the four prints given by french artist frederic sorio and about the french revolution how it started what were the advantages and how the nationalism how the concept of nationalism emerged and the concept of nation state how it came into existence now it's time to learn about the age of revolution okay so in which period the revolution started and it completed okay so without further wasting any time on this discussion let's start the chapter and before i start the chapter i would ask all of you who are watching this video to take out your books and follow me as i prefer line to line explanation okay so let's read and you just follow me okay as conservative regimes tried to consolidate their power liberalism and nationalism came to be increasingly associated with revolution in many regions of the europe such as the italian and german state so we have learned the once again emergence of conservatism who conservatists and their policy of conservatism who wanted to restore the monarchical rule once again in the throne of europe but still they were trying to bring the monarchy our liberalist or our uh, nationalist who were who were craving for the liberty and nationalism didn't stop their will they planned any how any by any means they have to get the nationalism in europe so they started planning they went underground and started creating societies they started to plan the how to get that nationalism they also didn't stop their uh, base okay they were still they were still trying their how best to get the nationalism okay now when they have started they have started in italy german state the provinces of the ottoman empire ireland and poland so this uh, all the uh, revolutionary activities they have started in some parts of europe like italy german states the ottoman empire and ireland and poland these revolutions were led by the liberal nationalists belonging to the educated middle class elite among whom now who are this educated middle class elite who among whom were the professors now they were the educated so educated means of course they there will be some school teachers some professors okay isn't it so teachers clerks members of the commercial middle classes so they were middle class they were not rich and the most important thing is they were educated since they were educated they knew the benefits of liberty and nationalism okay so they were well aware of the benefits and they were well aware of the uh, ed benefits of liberty and nationalism and how these things are going to benefit the society but each and every people will have freedom of speech and they will they will be treated as equal okay so they understood the importance of liberty now this educated middle class elites who were who are they they are the professors teachers clerks and some commercial some businessmen okay the first upheaval took place in france in july 1830 so the first upheaval when happened in july 1830 in france okay you can call uh, this as july revolution also okay the bourbon kings who had been restored to power during the conservative reaction after 1815 were now overthrown by liberal revolutionaries so what happened the bourbon king the bourbon king were up up thrown from their throne where during french revolution but when this conservatives conservatives came to the throne of in uh, europe what they have done they have restored they have once again brought back the bourbon dynasty so what happened during this july revolution in 1830 once again they were uprooted they were thrown out from the throne of france okay okay let's read further 
react, uh, reaction after 1850 were now overthrown by liberal revolutionaries who installed a constitutional monarchy with Louis Philippe. Now we know that those are the these conservatives were the uh, they were believing in they were they used to believe in monarchy and autocratic monarchy and their head uh, they marched with Louis Philippe to bring back the autocratic monarchy in their society. Okay, now the at its head when France seizes Metternich wants to remember the rest of the Europe catches cold. So the Metternich I have already explained you that Metternich was in charge of the Treaty of Vienna, Chancellor Metternich. Okay, so according to Metternich, Metternich once remarked that when France seizes means when France used to sneeze, the whole Europe used to get cold. Means what? Whenever uh, France will start a new revolution, the other states of Europe used to in take inspiration from France and they used to also used to start the revolution. It means same thing like when France sneezes, the rest of the Europe used to get catch cold. Okay. The July Revolution sparked an uprising in Brussels, which led to Belgium breaking away from the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. So the July Revolution sparked an uprising in Brussels. So this July Revolution started revolution in Brussels also. In, it inspired Brussels also, which led to Belgium breaking away from the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. Okay, and even that mobilized nationalist feeling among the educated elite across Europe was the Greek War of Independence. Now comes the Greek War of Independence. It's important. Okay, Greek War of Independence. Now we will learn about this Greek War of Independence and how it inspired the rest of the Europe. Okay, so it mobilized, it accelerated, it helped to for the it helped to grow the nationalist feeling among the rest of the European countries. Okay, Greece had been part of the Ottoman Empire since 15th century. So Greek was the part of Ottoman Empire, an empire which was uh, which was held by which was ruled by the Ottoman Turks. Okay, the growth of revolutionary nationalism in Europe sparked of a struggle for independence among the Greeks which began in 1821. So when it happened, it happened in 1820, 1821, it started, okay. Now, nationalists in Greece got support from other Greeks living in exile and also from many. Okay, so nationalists in Greeks, so the, who are the nationalists in Greek, they got support from other uh, Greeks who were in exile. So I have explained you what is an exile in my previous video. Exile is a punishment which were which usually were given to the nationalist or someone who used uh, who used to practice uh, who used to fight for independence or for nationalism. What they used to do with them? They used to send them far away from their native country into a place which was totally. Uh, vacant or sparsely populated okay they need to they have to stay there without knowing the natives of that place and they have to stay away from their native land okay now national nationalist in greece got support from other greeks living in the exile and also from many west europeans who have sympathies for ancient greek culture so there were so lot of west europeans who were having sympathies for the greek culture Poets and artists lauded Greece as the cradle of European civilization. Now, poets and artists, they called Greece as the cradle of European civilization and mobilized public opinion to support its struggle against a Muslim empire. So what happened? Now, Greece, uh, the poets and the artists, what they have done? They have practiced, they have made aware people about the Greek culture and the importance of Greek culture. And they said that the Muslim power which were uh, ruling the Greece were an alien power. They were not uh, equal to the Greeks power, isn't it? Both are different, both are not similar. So they were feeling sympathy for the Greek countries and what they done? They said they mobilized, they made people aware, they accelerated the revolution. How? By making aware, by uh, giving awareness to the people saying that this the power who is ruling the country is not ours. It's a different power, okay? 
Now, the English poet Lord Byron organized funds and later went to fight in the war, where he died of fever in 1824. Okay, now Lord Byron is a famous poet, famous poet you know, and he collected funds to fight for what? For war. And later he went to fight the war. Okay, but later he died in 1824 in because of fever. Finally, the Treaty of Constant. Constantinople of 1832 recognized Greece as an independent nation. So after the Treaty of Constantinople in 1832, the Greece was declared independent. Okay, so now the Treaty of these dates are very important. Okay, Treaty of Constantinople. Okay, 1832. Okay, so this Treaty of Constantinople, it because of this, it it declared Greece as an independent state or a country. Okay, so I hope you like this video. In my upcoming videos, I will explain you the romantic imagination and national feeling. Okay, so why I am not making the video lengthy or because you will not feel energetic to watch the video. Okay, so I hope you like this video. If you like this video, just hit the like button. And share with your friends if you think it's beneficial for them. And if you have any sort of uh, problems or difficulties understanding the text or the lesson, you can comment down me down in the comment section. Okay. So thanks a lot for staying tuned with us.